Right, thanks Paul. Uh, now we're going to move on to our last section of this uh, webinar, which relates to lifecycle costing, the next generation of BIM. Uh, what the industry refers to as a BIM dimension is just another type of analysis uh, from the 3D model and the data around it. So whereas Joe and Paul's presentation were around 5D BIM, uh, in this case, the sixth dimension of BIM uh, refers to lifecycle costing. So first, we're going to set the, uh, the stage by explaining why the industry should pay more attention to lifecycle costing and how the new BIM quantity surveyor should find some easy wins in this sphere. First, let's move to CAPEX versus OPEX. Just as a reminder for everyone, uh, CAPEX stands for Capital Expenditure, OPEX for oper Operational Expenditure, and TOTEX for Total Expenditure. Now, as a general rule of thumb, uh, CAPEX represents about 20% of TOTEX, OPEX the other 80%. So if all logic were respected, uh, we would expect the focus of the industry to be on OPEX rather than CAPEX. So to show where the attention of the industry and the public is actually paid, albeit in a very unscientific way, uh, we are showing here the popularity of the Google searches for these words. Now, if you are part of the construction industry, you won't be too surprised by the result. OPEX is the lower curb and CAPEX is the higher curb, which should surprise the general public with very good reason. Um, now, TOTEX is also shown on this graphic, but it is so small that it doesn't actually register. So to make sense of what we mean when we say lifecycle costing among all the uh, different terms listed here, this is what I mean. Uh, zooming in on this graph, the red portion of the graph is what I actually refer to. Uh, the lifecycle costing in use with maintenance and renewal and the end of life of the asset. Whereas Paul and Joe were dealing with the blue section of this graph with CAPEX and 5D BIM. So this is what is meant um, when we talk about OPEX and lifecycle costing and 6D BIM, all the terms being somewhat synonyms. Now that we have framed what the terms are and why it should matter to the industry that now that we have uh, BIM to help us, here is the challenge to the BIM QS. Can we perform life cycle costing analysis at design stage to help optimize costs in the long run? This is one of the things that we as a company are starting to get into to expand our services. Uh, more specifically, we're thinking about how to tie uh, together both exercises, uh, 5D BIM and 6D BIM, CAPEX estimate and OPEX estimate in the same process. So we're not saying that we have it all figured out because that's not the case. Uh, this is the start of a journey for us. What we are saying though is that we uh, think we can help drive the TOTEX cost down for clients by having two cost estimate analysis right from design stage, as opposed to how um, lifecycle costing is usually done, which is right after uh, handover of the asset. And BIM should help us with doing that. Now we believe that there are some tools out there that should help us out and uh, this is just a matter of connecting the dots between all of them. So you'll recognize the uh, document on the left hand side, that's the NRM1 document that Paul was talking about previously. Uh, on the right hand side is the NRM3 document. Uh, this is the document that provides the rules of measurement for maintenance and renewal costs which form the life cycle costing. Now inside that document is the following phrase, uh, NRM1 can be mapped to NRM3, which means that going from NRM1 cost breakdown for CAPEX, we should be able to get NRM3 cost breakdown for OPEX relatively easily. Moving to another set of tools, um, this is the two other standards. Uh, the one on the left hand side deals with lifecycle costing and the one on the right hand side people should recognize as the COBE standard, which is part of BIM level two documentation. So let's pay attention to a specific turn of phrase from the standard, uh, the interoperability of lifecycle costing with BIM. Uh, it should make it clear that performing lifecycle costing following the guidelines of this standard should work when using BIM, uh, which is good news for us. 
Moving on to these COBE standards, um, if you've paid attention to the, to the data that is required to go into every 3D model for every type of object, this is what you should find. In the middle there, you'll, you can see replacement cost and expected life lines of data. This should be very, very valuable pieces of information for anyone given that information and looking to perform uh, the life cycle costing analysis. Although how this is calculated and by whom should be another consideration. So to summarize on all the tools available to us so far, we've got the maintenance and renewal cost breakdown from NRM3, we've got the life cycle costing analysis that should work whether the project is BIM or not, we've got some very relevant pieces of uh, data that should appear in every 3D model, and all of this, at least in our mind, leads, leads us to think that we should be able to do some uh, 6D BIM right from design stage, which is the important word here. Now to finally move on to what we are actually able to achieve after this long introduction. This is the short video featuring a model from uh, Garrity Taylor Architects that was created during the 48 hour uh, BIM competition called uh, Building New York Live, uh, which is run by a site from a few weeks ago now. What we have here is the uh, first building that was designed, the sports arena. And the second building, the residential tower. As you can see on the uh, bottom, le bottom left side, we have the, uh, the quantities extracted from the models. Uh, using the uh, model map technique demonstrated previously by Joe. And switching over to the cost estimate, you can see the uh, life cycle cost breakdown following the NRM3 standards with maintenance works and renewal works. Now, if we drill down into the details of the estimate for the wall finishes, for example, uh, we've got the cost calculated per building uh, between the sports arena and the residential tower. And as you can see, we have data cells indicating the maintenance cost and the life expectancy or maintenance cycle in this case. And as we saw earlier, uh, both pieces of information can be automated from the COBE data schedule. Uh, then we have the rest of the spreadsheet calculating the uh, year by year cost for this particular element. Now this is what we can do from design stage with good data and a good 3D model uh, for the life cycle costing analysis. So now that we have the calculations done uh, using the models and we have our life cycle costing report uh, spreadsheet full of numbers, we thought about how to utilize that data in a more uh, user-friendly fashion. Uh, so this is where the web portal tool uh, built by our own uh, in-house IT team came in very handy for us. As you can see, the data came in directly from our cost report and uh, we now have the data on our uh, web portal where the user can basically interact with that data, uh, turning on and off particular items of maintenance or renewal works, and see the effect on the cycle analysis. Uh, the pie charts at the bottom are showing the percentages of the different work packages uh, between uh, maintenance and renewal. Now what happens when the life cycle costing analysis gives us the result that you can see in the above graphic? What we can try and do is to optimize the spread of cost over the years. Uh, so for that, we go back to our cost software and we either delay or bring forward some works or we spread them over several years even. Uh, so this allows us to come up with a second graphic that you can see at the bottom uh, where the cost is much more regular than in the above graphic with the same overall cost. But as you can see, even after the optimizing process, uh, the final few years of the analysis, still turn up some spikes in the cost. Uh, so it might be, uh, it might inform the owner of the building that it is time to think about the end of life of his asset, whether he still wants to invest in it or not. So in order to optimize the life cycle costing, you can either play around with the finer details like we just demonstrated, or you can change your design now because we have reviewed the models during the design stage. So there is still time to adjust the models. 
Finally, to conclude, uh, this is an extract from the government construction strategy uh, from 2011, saying that we should be able to save between 15 and 20% on every project in the future with the help of uh, new technologies and BIM particularly. Uh, we believe that conducting the life cycle costing analysis the way we've just demonstrated should help in achieving this saving. And this concludes the, uh, this section on life cycle costing. And finally, a big thank you to all those that helped provide models and information that went towards this presentation. The companies can be seen on your screen now. If you would like to ask any of the team any questions from what you've seen so far, please send them a question via the following Twitter handles. Thank you.